Hi, in this video, I'm going to be talking about hormonal therapy for breast cancer. I'm going to cover how, what hormonal therapy is, how it works, who gets it, how it's given, and what to expect. You can learn more about hormonal therapy at the Yerba blog. Breast cancer, in many cases, has receptors for hormones in our body. When those hormones hit breast cancer cells, it can stimulate them to grow. It doesn't depend on how much estrogen is in your body. It has nothing to do with your own estrogen levels. What we try to do with hormonal therapy is decrease that dance between the estrogen in your body and the cancer cell. Again, we give it even when we don't know that there's cancer, but we want to decrease the risk of the cancer coming back. So there are two main types of hormonal therapy for early stage breast cancer and several different kinds for advanced cancer. I'm going to focus now on the kinds we most commonly use, and those are tamoxifen and the aromatase inhibitors. There are three aromatase inhibitors. They're all equally effective. Tamoxifen works by mimicking estrogen and sitting in that receptor. So if you imagine a chair and you imagine somebody sitting in that chair, now nobody else can sit in there. So what does this have to do with breast cancer? Well, if the estrogen receptor is on that breast cancer cell and tamoxifen can take that space, now your body's own estrogen can't. The estrogen receptor is still there Estrogen is still there, it just can't get in that receptor or in that chair. Aromatase inhibitors work a whole different way. They decrease the conversion of androgens, male sex hormones, to estrogen. That's how estrogen is made after the ovaries stop working. So different parts of our body, in particular the adrenal glands, which sit on top of the kidneys, can have androgens and the androgens are converted by aromatase, an enzyme, into estrogens. So if we block that aromatase enzyme or we inhibit it with an aromatase inhibitor, now we don't see that conversion to estrogen. This doesn't mean you have higher levels of testosterone, by the way. Next, I'm going to talk about when we use hormonal therapy. If your breast cancer has or had hormone receptors, hormonal therapy will be an option in your case. The hormone receptors, there are two types, estrogen receptor and progesterone receptor. Most tumors that have the estrogen receptor have the progesterone receptor as well, but not always. If your tumor does not have the estrogen receptor, but does have the progesterone receptor, it's called ER negative, PR positive, hormonal therapy will be offered, but it's not as likely to work and I'll get to that in just a moment in terms of what happens if you have side effects. So hormonal therapy is given only to people whose cancers had the estrogen and or the progesterone receptors. If the tumor is estrogen receptor negative and progesterone receptor negative, we don't give hormonal therapy. So it's not necessary in your case. If your tumor does have progesterone and estrogen, if your tumor does have estrogen and progesterone receptors, I'll just call those hormone receptors, then endocrine therapy, hormonal therapy, is a really important part of your treatment. Even if you got chemotherapy, even if you had the most surgery available to you, even if you had radiation therapy and targeted therapy, it's important to know that hormonal therapy is a keystone of your treatment. It's not extra. It's really an important part of it. Why does this matter? Well, hormonal therapy is given for five to 10 years. And if you're not tolerating it, if you have side effects, and the side effects we see most often are vasomotor symptoms or menopausal-like symptoms, like hot flashes or night sweats. You may also, with tamoxifen, get leg cramps. You may also have vaginal dryness. So if you have those side effects, it's important that you work with your medical team to manage the side effects or to switch you to one of the different options, for example, from one aromatase inhibitor to another. If, for example, you were prescribed letrozole, the brand name for that is Femara, 
and you have side effects that you can't manage, you can switch to anastrozole. The bland name for that is Arimidex. So you can switch from one to another and see how you do. Most patients will actually do quite well on sort of plan B and equally effective. If you're not tolerating tamoxifen, you can switch to an aromatase inhibitor as long as your ovaries aren't working. So again, don't just stop your endocrine therapy without talking to your medical team. We also have ways to manage hot flashes and night sweats. We have ways to manage uh, leg cramps, for example. If your cholesterol goes up on an aromatase inhibitor, you could switch to tamoxifen or we can treat your cholesterol. If your bones are thin and the aromatase inhibitors, because they decrease estrogen in your body, can cause more thinning of the bones, maybe tamoxifen is the right medicine for you, or you can be treated for bone thinning. So what I'm getting at is don't think because you get a side effect that endocrine therapy is all over for you. Again, it's a keystone of your treatment. I've talked a little bit about side effects, those daily important side effects, leg cramps, night flat flashes or hot sweats, vaginal dryness, uh, which can lead to problems with intimacy. These are all very important. There's some rare but serious side effects. Tamoxifen, because it looks like estrogen enough to sit in that chair. Remember how I said it mimics estrogen? It's actually got estrogen-like activities on different parts of the body, in particular on the uterus. So if you have a uterus, it can increase your risk slightly for getting cancer of the uterus or endometrial cancer. This is something to know about. If you get postmenopausal bleeding, you'll want to let your doctors know. Again, endometrial cancer from tamoxifen is very rare, but it's an important thing to know about. The other important thing to know with tamoxifen, rare but serious, is a risk of blood clots. Because tamoxifen looks like estrogen, it can increase the risk of blood clots, as I'm sure you know with birth control pills, People who have a history of blood clots should not go on birth control pills. It's the same thing with tamoxifen. If you have a history with blo of blood clots and you're not on a blood thinner, you're not on something that keeps your blood thinner, then tamoxifen may not be a good idea in your case, depending on what the blood clot was associated with, what caused it. In aromatase inhibitors, we don't see an increase in the risk of blood clots. We don't see an increase in the risk of cancer of the uterus we do see an increase in the risk of cardiovascular disease and bone thinning. So we want to follow you for your bones, we want to follow your cholesterol. That's actually done with your primary care doctor or your gynecologist, but talk to your oncology team about when you should have these things done. If you're not postmenopausal, we don't need to check your bone density until you're actually in your 50s. It's not something that has to be done right away. In terms of preserving your bones, what you'll want to do is make sure you do weight-bearing exercise and have calcium and vitamin D. That's at least what we think right now is important. So those are the common side effects and then the rare but serious side effects. Once you come off of the medications, the side effects will go away, including the risk of blood clots and the risk of cancer of the uterus. What about the cost of endocrine therapy? Tamoxifen is generic. It's been around for so many years that it's actually inexpensive. It'll be your lowest copay possible. The aromatase inhibitors are available in generic form. Generic forms are just as good as the brand name. So a lot of people think they have to have the brand name. That's true for some medications. It's not true for the aromatase inhibitors. So ask for the generic version of the drug that will save you uh, money. If you can't pay for your medications, the companies that make the drugs have assistance programs for patients. It's really important that costs not be a barrier to you taking these very important medications. I hope this video has been helpful for you in understanding hormonal therapy. If you want to learn more, go to yerba.com to see your own personalized yerba report. You can also go to our blog to learn more about hormonal therapy. If you like this video, click like below and subscribe so more people can find it.